Welcome back, it's nice to see you again. This is Pixelmator 2.4.6. Got a lot of good quality of life updates in here. Let's jump into it and see how they all work. The first thing you're gonna notice is if we come up here and we create a new photo layer, pulls up our photo browser. Now if I press the space bar on the photo browser, you'll see it gives me a nice preview. Same as the rest of the system and it was something that felt wrong to have missing and it's really nice if you're looking for a detail in a particular photo. Now the next thing is once you drop a photo in that's too big for your canvas, instead of just blowing up your canvas, it sizes it to fit. Now in this case, I've got an oddly shaped photo for the canvas, so I'm gonna go ahead and resize it anyway. I want this train here to be a little bit offside. So those are our photo related features. Now let's talk about the vector features, of which there are actually quite a few. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop a rectangle on our canvas, and that's because this new feature affects text on shape. If you've ever worked with text on shape, you know one of the problems is trying to get the size of the text to match up with the length of the shape. So in this case, uh, the text goes all the way around the border, it's some really long text, and then the end of my text is getting cut off. It's too long for the shape. And so normally I'd have to fiddle with the size of the text and try to get something that's just right, and it is just a little clunky, it is. So what they've added is this great shrink text to fit checkbox. Now I know it's hard to see, but what we're looking at here is at the end of the text, the text that I copied and pasted into this big long text field is no longer being cut off at the end. It's not being truncated. Now there are some downsides. So in this case, I've got really long text and the performance isn't amazing on really big blocks of text, especially if it has to do a lot of calculation. The other thing is, is that if there's a lot of shrinking that has to happen, maybe your font size is really big and uh, it's got to shrink it a lot, maybe by 15, 20 points, I found that it eventually gives up and says, hey, I can't shrink this anymore and it stops trying. So you do have to have your font size at least relatively close to the right size. So I hope they do some improvements on this in the future, but right now it really is nice to get that last little bit of polish and making your text fit to whatever area or shape you're trying to fit it in. Another little improvement they made to text is, let's say you're typing out Pixelmator, you can come over here to this advanced text option and you can change the capitalization style. So you can change it to all caps or you can change it to start case. Uh, in this case, we want the all caps because we're going for a big bold title and it's nice because it means that I don't have to retype my text. So for example, this big long text around the outside border, I can just apply the all cap style and I don't have to go through and retype it all with the caps lock on. So a really nice little quality of life thing again. The last big feature that I can see myself using is with shapes. So I've got this little arrow shape that I like to use on YouTube thumbnails. I like to reuse it. And so one of the things you can do is after you've drawn out the shape that you want, you can actually right click it and save it as a shape for reuse later. What this means is after you've saved the shape, if you come over here to the shape tool and you have shape selected, not one of the particular styles, you can see save shapes up here. One of the things I've already seen them address in the support channels is that it doesn't save your styles, which is sort of a problem. So you can see in the case of my arrow, it doesn't quite work for my use case yet, but if you have a solid shape or something uh, that's not made of a union of two shapes, for example, works really well and is really useful for reusing shapes from project to project. So those are the big improvements. As I'm wrapping up the rest of this thumbnail, let's talk a little bit more about the smaller improvements. So for example, PDF uh, documents, you can now just drop them right in. If that's part of your workflow, that could be a big win. Same thing with Halide RAW files. So if you're a big fan of the Halide app and you like to take advantage of their RAW file format, they've improved how Halide files work. Overall improvement to performance. So they call out complex compositions could be up to five times faster, which could be a big win. And they've also decreased the memory footprint for most stuff. So that's an awesome win as well. SVGs, if you have SVGs that are part of your workflow, big SVGs that you've got maybe coming out of Illustrator or something like that, a big improvement to performance on importing those. That's something we've seen them iterate version over version, just getting that SVG engine stronger. And that's it. That's Pixelmator 2.4.6. Thanks for checking this video out. If you like this kind of news, if you're a YouTuber that wants to learn more about Final Cut, about Motion, Pixelmator, and other Mac related tools, make sure you stick around. We've got more content coming. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.